Good morning. All right, so yesterday I posed the problem, one thirds is less than two fifths. So if that is my claim, I want to support it with some kind of proof, some kind of evidence. So just showing what you know and how you know it, okay? All right, so there are a couple different ways to show whether or not you agree or disagree, true or false, one third is or is not less than two fifths. All right, one thing you can do is to put down in your number line where those thirds and fifths are and just visually see which one compares to which one, okay? All right, so because one third is less than one whole, and I know that because one whole would be three thirds. When your numerator and your denominator are the same number, that equals one whole. So I know that it starts, it's less than one whole. Same thing with our two fifths. It's less than one whole because one whole would be five fifths. When your numerator and denominator are the same, they are one whole, all right? So because I know that one third and two fifths are both less than one whole, my two whole numbers are going to be between zero, one, or my two numbers are going to be zero and one. Okay. All right, now I need to figure out where those thirds and those fifths tick marks go. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my thirds. And remember, anytime you see a denominator that tells you one less than that will give you how many tick marks you make because on the third tick mark that gets our whole, okay? But because our denominators are three, that means we're going to have how many tick marks? Yeah, two. So I'm gonna have as equal as I can without using a ruler, okay? So I should have one, two tick marks, and I do this because it just kind of lets me know roughly where I'm gonna put those tick marks. So one third, two thirds. I'm gonna go ahead and write down what it is. And I'm going to go ahead and plot my one third. We're plotting them just lets me know on the number line which number I'm working with. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and write the tick marks for fifths. So how many tick marks am I going to have for my fifth? With a denominator five. Four. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with my finger, just kind of visually seeing where my fifths would go. Okay, kind of somewhere around there. One fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths. Pretty close. One fifth, two fifths, two fifths, four fifths. And then our last one would be five fifths, again, also along with our three thirds. Okay. All right, and now with that in there, and that glare is still working at us right there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and plot my two fifths. All right, so now that I have both fractions plotted, this is a visual on my number line of which one is closer to one whole. So just looking at my number line, I see that two fifths is closer to my one whole. So two fifths is greater than one third, or saying it the other way, one third is less than two fifths. And does that agree with my comparison sentence? Yes. It's true. All right, so we're gonna look at another way that you can check your work using our fraction strips. Again, if you don't have it, that's okay. All right, so if I look at my fraction strips, I can see what one third looks like and where it is in our number line. Remember that the whole strip equals one whole. I'm looking at two fifths. So two fifths, obviously that line goes further than my one third line. So two fifths, is closer to one whole, or again, in other words, one third is less than two fifths. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you another way. So you're going to have three separate ways to figure out or tell me if one third is in fact less than two fifths. Okay, the way that we're gonna figure it out is to, to find a common denominator. I know you guys love doing that. All right, looking at one third, looking at two fifths. I need to find a common denominator so that I can just based off the numerator, the top number, see which one is greater. All right, in order to find a common denominator, we need to find the multiples of three and five that are in common, okay? So some of us can do that quick mental math. You're like, mm, got it, okay? 
while some of us are going to continue to work on our multiples, write it out so that it's another way of also checking our work. Okay, so I'm going to start with my threes, multiples of threes. So I'm going to go three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. I usually only go about five numbers out just because it's usually as far as you need to go. Again, the word is usually, sometimes you need a little further. Okay, and then working on my multiples of five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Now I'm looking for a number that both three and five have in common. So looking down the line, any fives up top? No. 10s up top? No. 15s up top? Hey, I see that they do have 15 in common. So now I have a common denominator for both three and five. So I know I'm going to multiply something here to get me a denominator of 15. Same thing here. The reason I put it in box is just to make sure I know that the same number here is going to go right here. Same numbers, okay? Again, denominator of 15. So starting with my one thirds, three times something is going to give me 15. Three times what will give me 15? Five. And checking my work there, I can actually check it here. So if you write out your multiples, this is also like a, a, a math table here. So the first column is three times one or five times one, times two, times three, times four, times five. So three times one, two, three, four, five is 15. So three times five is 15. Whatever you do with your denominator, you have to do with your numerator. So three times five is 15. One times five, same number, is all right, so now we know an equivalent fraction for one third is 5 fifteenths. Now we need to figure out what our new fraction is, the common denominator of 15 for our two fifths. Five times one, two, three is 15. Again, whatever you do with your denominator, you have to do with your numerator. If five times three is 15, two times three would give you Six. All right, so now that we know that one thirds is equivalent to five fifteenths and two fifths is equivalent to six fifteenths, and we have now a common denominator of 15, we're only looking at our numerator. Five is less than six. True. And because we have those equivalent fractions of five fifteenths and six fifteenths, we can go ahead and write down our comparison sentence. 5 fifteenths is less than 6 fifteenths, which also supports 1 thirds being less than 2 fifths. Okay, so again, this method really does give you an, another, an additional way to check your work using our number line, fraction scripts, and common denominator. Okay, if you have any questions, please ask. Otherwise, have a great day. I hope this is some good practice for you. Work on some additional fractions and comparison sentences using common denominators and number lines if possible. Have a great day. Thanks.